Welcome to the part two of the June 2016 Regents. Let's get this going. So for our first question, we're going to describe a sequence of transformations that maps triangle ABC onto triangle DEF as shown below. Just to tell you guys, this is from level one, where we learned about transformations. Now, there's not much to say about this, except you have to be able to identify how to map these onto each other. My only tip to you before getting started is make sure that you're mapping the letters into the right places. So A should be mapping onto D, B should be mapping onto E, and C should be mapping onto F for this to be done correctly. So that should be your first thing before starting. Now, since my goal is to get A to map onto D, I think my first move here is to do a translation. All right, I want to slide this over first. So I'm going to go a translation of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so I'm going to go 6 to the right. So first we're going to do a translation 6 units to the right. And once I've done that translation, let's draw that out and see what that looked like. Okay, so my base is uh, 3 units, so it's 1, 2, 3, so it looked like that. My C is up 3 over 1, so it should look something like this after the translation. Now to get these two to map onto each other, I'm going to label this A prime, B prime, C prime. My next move is going to be to do a reflection over the x-axis, okay? And that would map them perfectly onto each other because if you see, A is 3 units from the x-axis, D is 3 units from the x-axis. This is perfectly in the middle. It's a line of symmetry. So, then a reflection over the x-axis maps triangle ABC onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, while I got you here, I'm going to say this is not the only way to do it. There's probably an infinite amount of ways to do this transformation. I'm just going to show you one more that I've seen students do that I think is a pretty good one as well. And I'm just going to speak it out. We don't have to write it down. So another way to do this is do a translation six units to the right, four, five, six, and then six units down. And if you've done it that way, what you should get is something that looks like this. All right? Now, once you have it looking here, like, once you've done your translation, what you have to do is a reflection still. And what you do is a reflection over this line right here in the middle. And this line is y equals negative 3. So translation 6 right, 6 down, and a reflection over y equals negative 3 would also be good. But you know what? Some people do rotations on this question, which is definitely not correct. And the reason is, if you were to rotate this, right, if this rotates, c is going to map onto d, right? I think that's the thought there. Um, and if you look here, c has to map onto f. So C and D actually don't match up. So that's a good indicator that if you're rotating, things aren't ending up in the right place. I know it looks like that, but that's not the right way to do it. Let's move on to the next question. Point P is on segment AB such that AP to PB is 4 to 5. If A has coordinates 4, 2, and B has coordinates 2, 22, 2, determine to state the coordinate of P. Well, this is from level 8, where we talked about applications of coordinate geometry. A lot of abbreviations here. And if you really want to look at this, how to do this, this is 8.5, where you learned how to partition a line second. Now, you'll see here they didn't give you a graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the graph. Sorry, we're going to go over to the graph paper and draw this ourselves. So we got 4, 2 for A, 22, 2, and we're trying to split this in a ratio of 4 to 5. All right, so let's, let's go over the graph paper. You can meet me over there. All right, we're going over to graph paper, going over to graph paper, going over to graph paper. Oh, man. Our, let's make our axes. Because one of our points has uh, an x coordinate of 22, we got to make this thing pretty uh, big, right? So we're just going to drop it down like this. We'll go over all the way. All right, so we have two points. A is 4, 2. B is 22, 2. And we know we want to get a ratio of 4 to 5. Let's give it a shot. So our first point is 4, 2, which is right here. So that's our A. The next point is 22, 2. So we just got to count that out. So 1, 
So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, so that's our B. All right, now we want a ratio of 4 to 5, so we're going to add this together, and we get 9. All right, so we're going to cut this line AB into 9 equal parts. So what we have to do, know is how much it goes up and how much it goes over, and then cut it from there. Now you'll see here it doesn't go up, so that makes it a little bit easier. So we're just going to count how far across this goes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, so this is 18 units long. We're going to cut that into nine even pieces. Each piece is going to be two units. So now we're just going to count two units. Every two, we put a point. One, two, 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 one, two. One, two. And we want a ratio of four to five, so we're going to count out five of these pieces. So that's one piece, two pieces, three pieces, and four pieces. And if you notice on the other side, you have one, two, three, four, five pieces. So that's a ratio of four to five. So the point P is at, let's see, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, point twelve two. Now, follow me back for a second. I want to tell you something really important about this question. You cannot just put this as your answer. All right, you can't just write P is 12, 2. Uh, this happened on last year's Regents. The reason, the reason is you have shown no work. All right, you actually have to show some sort of work to get credit here. So you just have to draw a rough sketch of what you've done, okay? So all you could do is just draw, I mean, it doesn't even have to be great. You could just say that this is point four two. this is point twenty two two. You can then just draw that you've, like, counted over like this. 18 times, draw exactly your sketch, doesn't even have to be the best sketch you've ever drawn, all right, it should be more accurate than what I'm doing, of course, and once you have your sketch done, then you could say that this is point P, 12, 2, but you have to show some sort of work, and this shows that, that you at least counted it and then cut it up, okay? Oh, this question, in triangle CED, as shown below, points A and B are located on sides CE and ED, respectively. And line AB is drawn such that AE is 3.75, AC is 5, EB is 4.5, BD is 6. Explain why AB is parallel to CD. Now, this is a very interesting proof. All right, I want to explain why AB and CD are parallel. All right, and what I need to do is just find, I have to prove that these two angles are congruent. Those are my corresponding angles. Because if corresponding angles are congruent, then I know that AB and CD are parallel. So the way I'm going to prove these are congruent is by doing the following. Um, we're going to show that we have side angle side similarity in our two small triangles. So what you're going to do is start off by doing this. You're going to draw two triangles as we've done. Okay? We have A, E, B, and C, E, D. Now, we know that E is congruent because of the reflexive property. And we have 3.75, 4.5. And what are our side lengths here? That's right, it's 8.75 and 10.5. And what we're going to do is just show that these two are similar triangles. All right? And if they're similar, then we know all the angles are congruent. So I know that A is congruent to C, B is congruent to D, and then I would know that these two are also congruent. A is congruent to C. So we're trying to prove they're similar, so we know all the angles are, in fact, congruent. So what do we have to do? We'll do a side angle side proof. So we've got to write our evidence here. So evidence for our side angle side is what? Well, angle E is congruent to angle E. We know that. Now we've got to show the two sides have the same ratio. So it's 8.75 over 3.75 and 10.5 over 4.5. All right, now put those in the calculator and see what ratios you get. You get 2.33 and repeating. 10.5 by 4.5 is also 10.33 repeating. Okay, so you know that these two triangles are similar because of angle-angle similarity. So what we're going to do is write that triangle AEB is similar to triangle CED. And now I'm just going to write a little simple paragraph here to kind of answer this question. And so I'm going to say this. AB is parallel to CD because corresponding angles are congruent. All right, we know angle E, A, B 
is congruent to angle E C D. All right, and there we go. All right, and that would pretty much explain, and not pretty much, that explains why these two lines are parallel, because you have corresponding angles that are congruent. Nice little proof there, right? A little, little hard for a two-pointer. Now, this question to follow up is incredibly easy. This is from level six, where we talked about trigonometry. And I'll tell you this, all you have to know to do this, uh, this uh, problem, geez, is this formula, is that the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B if and only if A plus B equal 90 degrees. So all you have to know is A plus B equals 90. In this case, we know that A equals 73 and R, sorry, and B is equal to, well, we don't know it. They just call it R here. So this is what you're going to have to do. You just do R plus 73 is going to have to equal 90 degrees. Subtract 73 from both sides. And you get R is equal to, well, that is 17 degrees. And that is done and done. All right. And the explanation is literally just writing everything that I wrote, not the level six, but just write sine A equals cosine B if A plus B equals 90. And then just show that how you solved it like this. All right. And that's the explanation. If you want to be lazy about it, just say that A plus B have to be complementary or add up 90. So therefore, R has to equal 17. All right, that's a good one, right? That's a nice one. 29, though, Woo! once again, getting annoying. These are annoying. What the question here is saying is this. It tells you in, this, uh, in the problem that you know the arc length of circle 1 is pi, and the arc length of circle 2 is 13 pi over 8, and we know the radius is 6.5, and the radius of this is 4. Dominic thinks that angles A and B have the same radian measures. State whether Dominic is correct or not. All right, now, since these are arc lengths, you probably need the arc length formula to do this. And all we have to do is find the angle of both of these using the arc length formula and see if they're the same or not. So let's write out that formula. So the arc length, okay, is equal to uh, theta over 360 times the circumference formula, which is 2 pi r. And we're going to just do this twice today. So it's theta over 360 times 2 pi r. All right, we're going to do this in two separate ones. So the first one, what we know is that the arc length is pi. So it's pi is equal to, well, we don't know what theta is. So it's pi is equal to x over 360. We're solving for the angle times 2 times pi times a radius of 4. All right, now to solve this, you might remember this. What we're going to do is first, Cancel out your pi's. And by cancel, it means divide both sides by pi. So what you're left with here is not nothing but a 1. And then you're going to multiply both sides by 360. All right? So 360's on this side cancel out, and 360 times 1 is 360. What we're left with is x times 2 times 4, which is 8x. Divide both sides by 8. And what you get here is x is equal to 45 degrees. All right? Now, if you're confused about radian measures, remember, this is just a different way of measuring an angle, okay? So you can measure an angle either using degrees or radians. We found in degrees, that's perfectly acceptable for this problem. Now for this one, we're going to do the same thing. It tells us that the arc length is 13 pi over 8, which is equal to x over 360, we don't know the angle again, times 2 pi times 6.5. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cancel out the pi's. All right, and multiply both sides by 360. Oop, getting a little crowded here. When you multiply this side by 360, everything cancels. All right, and when you multiply the other side, uh, well, let's see, it's 36, 13 times 360 divided by 8. 13 times 360 divided by 8 is 585. And on the other side, we have x2 is 6.5, so we get 13x. Divide this by 13. Uh, what do you know? What do you get here? 45 degrees again. So now we're just going to write out our answer. We found that they both have a degree measure of 45 degrees. This is 45. This is 45. 
So we could say pretty straightforward, Mr. Dominic, you've done it correctly. Dominic is correct because both circles have the same angle measure. Done and done. It's a lot of work for two points again. That's a lot of work. All right. So we got two more. We're sorry, we only got one more question for this video. This one we're going to talk about in our constructions video. So we're just going to do this one. And this is just a level six question where you do trig. And all you have to do is draw a nice little uh, uh, diagram here. So you have your wall. You have your ladder leaning against it, right? Terrible picture, I know. The top of the ladder touches the building 10 feet above the ground. So we know this right here is 10 feet. So we're going to put 10 here. And the foot of the ladder is 4 feet from the building. All right, this is definitely not drawn to scale. scale. Find to the nearest degree the angle the ladder makes with the ground. So that would be right here. You're looking for this angle, the ladder and the ground. So this is 90. This is our x. So we're going to label our sides. This is opposite. We don't have a hypotenuse. This is adjacent. So if we have O and A, let's check this out. We got so ka toa. O and A is going to be tangent. So we're going to set this up as the tan of x, we're looking for the angle, is equal to O, which is 10 over 4. We're going to just put this in the calculator. Sorry, we're going to take the tan of negative 1 of both sides. To solve this, whenever you're looking for an angle, you use tan negative 1 or the inverse tan. We get x equals the tan negative 1, 10 over 4. Let's just put that in the calculator and we get x is equal to 68.2 two basically and this says round your error to the, your angle to the nearest degree so we're going to finish this and we're going to say the angle with the ground is 68 degrees all right notice how i put degrees so i answered in my units and this is to the nearest degree so we rounded it off all right that's it for this video Woo! that's a part two for you peace out and don't forget to kiss your mama